Welcome with another presentation of mine on one of the topics of economics, which is the definition, nature, and scope of economics. And uh, it talks about what three main economists define economics in their own words. It is the first topic in the, the class of the course of BCom first year. So let's start. This is a brief introduction about myself. So let's start with what is economics. So the most common definition of economics says that it is a science or the social science which is concerned with the production, exchange, or we can say distribution and consumption of various commodities or specifically goods and services in economics, in economic system, it studies how individuals, businessmen or business people, governments and nation make choice, uh, choices on allocating resources to satisfy their wants and needs so that it help us to understand the most crucial question of economy that is how these scarce resources can be used to increase the wealth or the human welfare. Because there are uh, the users are innumerable and with limited resources, definitely the problem of choice arises. So that is how we reach to the uh, next part, which is the central problem of economics, which deals or says that uh, the central problem of economics on this is uh, on the scarcity of resources and choices among their alternative users. The resources or the uh, or inputs available to produce goods are limited, as we know. Uh, this scarcity induces people to make choices among alternatives. And here how economics help us to make the best choices or the best or choosing the best alternative among these limited choices. For example, if we can take uh, be, uh, India being the agrarian economy, we can take the example of a farmer who can grow several things on, on the field like paddy, shokin or banana or cotton etc but he actually has to go uh, for choosing a crop which uh, depends on the availability of irrigation water so that is how we actually have to depend upon choice making because of the limited resources we have and this is uh, how we can say the central problem of the economy or the economics so if we try to show it uh, or go through the pictorial representation of the same, then we can see there is this arrow showing that there are unlimited users with limited resources. And these limited resources are being, that's why unevenly distributed among them. So that is how the problem arises. That is the problem of the scarcity of resources and hence the problem of choice making. So these two problems are the central topics of economics uh, actually in blend help us to understand or to compare or to make a good choice with the subject like economics to choose the best alternative for us which can increase our welfare. Now the very first economist Adam Smith whose time period was from 1723 to 1790 he actually talked about economics in his book called An Inquiry into Nature and Causes of Wealth of Nation, which came up in 1776. He defined economics mainly in terms of wealth. He said economics uh, is the science of wealth. He actually talked about that how a nation's wealth can be, sorry, can be created. And uh, he actually considered individual's wealth as the only factor through which the interest of a society can be achieved. And this is how he talked about an invisible hand, which actually works in, the, say, in this direction only. But he didn't talk about the society's interest as a whole. So his prime concern or the focus was wealth. That's why we called his definition as the wealth definition. This is how the criticism part came up and people actually criticized his uh, definition that he only talked about wealth and never in terms of human welfare. 
thinkers like uh, Ruskin and Carroll condemned economics as a decimal science because uh, they actually uh, thought that it talks about money. It talks about the wealth and money is something that brings up or uh, actually is the reason of war among two people or communities or the nations. So they actually condemned this idea. And so uh, it was this definition was rejected and they actually emphasized that there shall be a focus from wealth to welfare. The next economist here was Alfred Marshall. His time period is uh, from 1842 till 1924. The book in which he talked about economics was titled as The Principle of Economics, which came up in 1890. And we can see uh, I've enlisted a few main features of his definition where I've highlighted the main terms as he talked about his definition is known as material welfare definition. Why? Because he talked about three main points. That is, first of all, he talked about an ordinary man that uh, the, basically the economic aspects of an ordinary human life or an ordinary man or an individual. Then he talked about uh, both individual and social action like uh, an individual and his social interaction and action to bring up his welfare. And then he talked about uh, two things, that is material things and immaterial things, where he mainly emphasized upon material things. So according to him, material things are those that can be seen, felt or touched, like book or rice, etc. And they can bring up the welfare of human being or the society. So he mainly talked about this material welfare and his theory was criticized obviously on the same ground because he only and only considered or mainly emphasized about material things but there are a few things which uh, are not which are not being considered they are can they can be considered among the material things but they actually do not bring up the welfare of the society like if we talk about alcohol that is being one of the part of material things, but it actually do not uh, contribute into the welfare of human being or an individual. So it was uh, uh, based on the concept of welfare, but there was not a clear cut definition of welfare because he emphasized only one part only, which is the material attainment of uh, uh, people, material attainment by the people. So this was kind of incomplete definition of uh, welfare and that is how it was being criticized to, uh, to be not able. So we can see here that how the Marshall definition was criticized because it talked about a very limited scope of the definition of economics. The third economics which we'll be talking about uh, is Mr. L. Robbins. And his time period was from 1898 to 1984. And the name of his book in which he talked about economics was an essay on the nature and significance of economic science, which came up in 1932. If to highlight or, the co or to quote the definition, then he said that economics is a science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means, which have alternative uses. So this way, his uh, definition which was a modern approach was based upon a few main points I've highlighted highlighted or enlisted uh, below you can see that human beings have unlimited number of wants which he called up or used as ends the term he, uh, the term for wants which he used was ends and then resources or which he called uh, as means on the other hand are limited or scarce in supply so there is a scarcity of commodities in the economy because uh, of the greater demand than its actual supply. And so the scarce means are capable of having alternative uses. Hence, anyone will choose the resource that will satisfy his particular want. This, according to Robbins, economics is a science of choice.
according to him people can make choices and that is how they can choose the best alternative among the available resources and that is how they can attain their welfare his theory again was being criticized on a few grounds uh, i have enlisted a few that people said or the contemporary economists or the thinkers they pointed out that robbins did not actually made any distinction between goods and goods which are conducive or are not conducive to human welfare like a few which actually do not contribute to the real welfare of uh, human or not so uh, he only said that people have uh, can make choices among the uh, resources which have alternative uses so actually did not made this dis- uh, distinction between the two that what kind of goods like conducive or non conducive then robbins only talked about the micro economic aspects like uh, the resource allocation which is one of the part of micro micro economic approach he did not talk about the economy as a whole or he did not actually cover the larger aspects which comes under the macro economic aspect like for example the income distribution or the national income distribution because national income is again one of the resources but he did not about talk about those aspects so that is how um, he actually failed upon then uh, robbins theory uh, or the definition does not cover the theory of economic growth and de- development because he did not talk about these things he only talked about resources or the scarcity or the number of users um, and how they cho- made make in, how they make the choices and how they can attain the welfare but he actually did not touch the real problems or the main concerns of the economy so that is how his theory was been criticized so if we uh, try to define all this in a nutshell then we can see the first or the classical economist mr adam smith his theory was called as the wealth definition theory because he talked mainly about wealth and he defined economics mainly in terms of wealth then came another uh, economist mr alfred marshall who talked mainly in terms of the material welfare uh, so his theory was uh, material welfare definition of economics and then mr l robbins who talked mainly in terms of scarcity and choice so his theory or the definition can be called as the scarcity and choice making definition there are very uh, a few sources from which i have taken some information and uh, so in the last i would like to thank you all for watching this presentation of mine uh, but kindly don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel because for we are we keep coming up with new tutorial videos based on economics and econometrics and i'll be try to cover the syllabus for the classes like bcom bcom honors so keep watching keep enjoying take